So the next one is uh, basically talking about a bunch of buff things that are uh, being implemented right now. We'll send patches uh, for S5, how things are being improved. One of those was basically SSC where we'll change the critical section uh, to enable the critical section profiling. We'll uh, change it to SSC and M mode being uh, injecting event. So as I said, if you see anything, any kind of issues with that kind of direct approach, we shout. So other things, I'll just go over a brief introduction, like what exactly exists today and how it works. Just, uh, so we have SPI PMU extension with SCO PMF that enables per stat and sampling usage that's currently enabled in kernel. So none of the hardware actually implements SCO PMF, but uh, Andy and T had had some different version of SCO PMF where your uh, some register is different or your interim number is different. So it just uh, relies on the alternate framework to patch that. And uh, since none of the IS extension until this point was actually able to access all the counter CSR, configure all the uh, MHP event CSR in S mode, what we're relying on is SPI PMU extension and the firmware uh, having a map of all the event encoding and counter mapping through device tree. And that was uh, that device tree node was only accessible through firmware. So that's why it will, that's how it will let kernel know. Uh, where are the mappings and encodings? Now, with a bunch of extensions that are being uh, currently review complete, need to be ratified, is counter delegation, which enables your super uh, Linux kernel to directly access everything in S mode without uh, touching SBI PMU, apart from if you want to use firmware counter, uh, if you want to use firmware profiling. So, for uh, generic hardware profiling, uh, hardware counter profiling, you don't need to do any SBI PMU. And you can use these IS extensions, but with that, uh, there brings a bunch of problems, uh, which I'm going to talk about. One is, uh, we have this, uh, we need to make it backward compatible. So we have now this bunch of checks where, okay, you see first, if the IS extension is there, use this, otherwise, uh, use the SBA PMU. So that static call static key thing is all over the driver now. Then next is how do you discover the event encoding and counter mapping? So basically when I say event to counter mapping is we have uh, 29 programmable events and then we have a bunch of, uh, sorry, 29 programmable counters. And I don't know, every vendor implements thousands of events. So we need to have a map, which events can be monitored by which counters. So the problem in describe land is we don't have any architectural events apart from cycle and instructions. So the cycle and instructions are only, uh, are also they don't support sampling. So what is recommended by the ISA or like RBA, uh, by the ISA and RBA community is every vendor will use some programmable counter to also monitor cycle and instruction apart from the counter zero and two for cycle and instruction to enable sampling. So now we need to have that counter uh, mask for those events because now your cycle also can be monitored by regular cycle and instruction counter, which is like zero and two, also some programmable counter, which enables you sampling. So we need to pass that information to the driver so that it uh, uses that. And that's where the generic uh, notion of how ARM64 does the event to counter mapping doesn't hold anymore because we can't do all, all to all mapping uh, in this five and it's kind of also, we tried to discuss that in the RVI SIG and nobody, no, none of the community members agreed to that scheme. So what eventually we ended up, I don't know if you can you see the image, how small it is there. Yeah. But so what I did basically current proposal is two things. One is uh, introduce a field in the JSON, which is called like counter ID mask to so that the perf tool can pass that mask, put it in a config too, and <clears throat> pass that to the driver. So I don't know if I can zoom it. Can I zoom it? It's fine. Yeah, uh, there's so, a way to zoom it. I just don't know. So yeah, I don't know if it's probably fine. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyways, so the couple of issues that we have is, uh, so I'm adding this one, which none of the other architecture do the, then if you use this, then everything becomes raw event. There is no uh, standard event anymore. We don't have any predefined event in CSFS, unlike other architectures do. 
So for any standard events size like uh, cycle or instruction or cache events, everything gets renamed in a JSON file. So this JSON file is basically for KMU. So now we have a JSON file or for KMU events that renames the existing uh, cycle and instructions. So if you do like pop CPU cycles, it don't work anymore because now everything has to be a raw event and uh, everything has to be passed from the JSON and JSON, uh, the JSON file, if I have the same event name, it will basically conflict with the per standard events. So I don't know if it's a best way to do it. Probably there should be a way to uh, in perf tool. There's a map of this is my uh, per standard event. Map it to this event defined by the in the JSON. That's required because uh, every vendor will have this these cycle and instruction events and some of the standard cache events mapped to some other counter, some other encoding. Because we don't have any, usually all these basic events, all other architecture have standard encoding space, standard encoding for events. We don't have that. So this is one problem. So any feedback on this? Not not getting rid of device tree binding. So kernel, we don't use the device tree binding anyways. So device tree binding is only for the firmware. So if any hardware has the these extensions, it will not use SBI PMU at all. So there is no device tree binding in place. But I'm sure like this is, will be ratified probably this year or like or sometime next year. So there will we have to support a bunch of hardwares until this gets into the hardware. So SBI PMU will still be used, but for the newer hardware with this extension, you don't need the SBI. Uh, so the plan is not to do like have SBMI, SBI PMU also just do everything as a raw event either? Like Everything happens in driver, no SBI PMU gets called unless you want to use firmware counters, which is just a logical like, problem. But for hardware that doesn't support these ISA extensions, it doesn't oh, need to use SBI PMU. Yeah, that will, that's why I said uh, in the beginning, now if you see the driver, I'll send the patch probably this week, which has like now a bunch of uh, static key checks where it says, if I say ISA extension is preferred, because that's the optimized way to do it with uh, minimizing the traps. So if ISA extension is there, use this, like access the CSRs, otherwise make the SPI call whenever you want to configure, uh, do the counter configurations. I, I don't want to spend too much time, but I guess my question is like, so for the interface between the driver and SBI, right? There's the standard extensions and there's the raw, the standard events and the raw events. Is the intention to like have that interface always use raw events? and or or continue to have the mapping that we do in, in firmware so you can use the standard SBI. No, no firmware interaction nothing uh nothing comes from the firmware because we want to have everything in s mode and uh manage the json file in the form uh in the s mode part of the reason also is eventually we'll uh, have acpi only so no firmware will not have any device tree so then uh it also saves the burden of firmware supporting sbi pmu extension which don't care about sbi pmu at all where hardware have the counter, uh, counter delegation, but for existing things, it will continue to work. So, is the intention not to support the SBI PMU extension for hardware that does implement these ICE extensions? Yes. So that, that would so breaking compatibility with existing software that assumes the existing. No, it will not break. It, at runtime, you detect, and then uh, there's no compa uh, backward compatibility break. At runtime, you detect whether you have ICE extensions. If you have, then use it. Otherwise, fall back to the SBI PMU extension if the firmware supports it. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I, I'm trying to understand here. You're saying, hey, you have two cycle events. One is like the free running kind of cycle event, and the other one is you can use it to do perfect code and profiling. Mm -hmm. So and, this and, and they uh, and you're trying to find a way to abstract this in the JSON. Yes. Because... Why? Why do you put the counter? I've never seen this before. The way it's done usually is you invent an encoding. You put you you create an encoding that is not a hardware encoding and the kernel will recognize that special event code and then say, oh, you want that very special version of the cycle of the cycle and it will you will program it on the correct counter. Right? That's, uh, that's yes, the that's, way it's done. That's the way it's done because uh, you, if not you- Not this, this you're saying, hey, I want you, you name the counter. It's yeah. not the way perfect- I agree, work. that's why I said, it's probably that's not the best feedback. solution. That's my feedback. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Uh, the, the reason I wanted, uh, did this way at the first version is to uh, enable that counter ID mask because I don't know whether the cycle is mapped to which counter for so that not, vendor. That's a different problem. You're talking about the, ref, the, 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 the generic event called cycle. Yes. That one, it goes through the perf tool it passed as a, as a generic cycle event and the kernel does the mapping from that one 
to whatever the hardware yes. defines Got for it. it, right? It's in the kernel, it's not in the tool. The encoding pass for cycle is encoding zero or something like this. Yeah. It's a hardware called a hardware uh, PMU event, and it's not into the, 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 the kernel and the table that the kernel defines for each CPU model. Yep. So if you just want to do the stat on like how many cycles or how many instruction, mm -hmm. you can still use the zero and two, like whatever yeah, the hardware yeah. for. This is for uh, to enable profiling on those this one because your case, it seems like you need to have a different event. You say, hey, I want the cycle, uh, the cycle free running or the cycle, yes. uh, the regular. We cycle. we can and do that way. Saying I can see your problem at the hey, what about the generic event for cycle? So currently, what my implementation does, at least for the first uh, version of the driver, is check if it is a this cycle executed event and if you if the user requested uh, profiling if the if if the user has not requested profiling like if you are doing power start mm -hmm. it just defaults to the counter zero because yeah, that's it can, mandatory it can be transparent to the user though. it is transparent to the user yeah, it's just yeah. that this aba uh, not aba basically but the name change is which is bit weird what we can do is we can have like a different event and then cycle instruction remains to be only stat then there's a different event name but then user gets confused if I, I can do profiling on cycles, but I can do profiling on cycle dash or something. No, I think if you hide it behind the generic event, it's probably okay. You just need to make sure that the two count the same thing. Is that the case? That's, yeah, that's the hardware's responsibility to make sure that they count the same thing. The same thing. Yeah. Ian has a question. Um, yeah, no, it sounded like you were changing the event discovery code and having different event discovery on risk five versus everything else would be a pain in the ass. Um, so the, the, the legacy events, the cache and the, the cycles and instructions and so on. Yeah, they, 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 they use a, a PMU type that's, that's never used mm -hmm. the, the low code, the, the low, the low ones, except Intel has a habit of using, um, raw, which is four, uh, and, and over in, uh, and overloading that. But yeah, having two different discovery mechanisms for risk five and everything else, the, the problem is, is that we'd always break you because we have no way. Yep. At the moment, it's very difficult to test risk five. Agreed. So yeah. what's the best, what's the other alternative solution? If we can find my mapping between the standard event to a vendor specific name, that's the best thing. Uh, what's the next best thing looking for? Like, how do we solve this one? To where we can also provide the counter mass. Yeah, to, to Stefan's point, it's like uh, just just always um, hacking it in the kernel driver. It's, it's the way it's done at, at, the, at the moment. Okay, well, the the legacy events they're not really going anywhere, and we just added a whole bunch of like big little hybrid support for them. Um, okay. So if Risk Five doesn't support them, it's not going to support a whole bunch of things, and it's going to completely change how event discovery works, and it's going to break as a consequence. Okay. Okay, uh, we'll try to see how do we do the, the driver without changing this one. Um, so this was basically the next problem is counter mapping. So x86 does, uh, so ARM64 does allow to, uh, all to all mapping. x86 has a bunch of constraints with all the CPU model specific constraints being applied on those. We don't want, we'll have much more bigger problem because now we have much, every vendor will have different constraints. So we can go that route. So it's easier to just have the JSON file infrastructure where vendors can just update whatever the counter constraint they want to put in uh, for without not to break anything. I chose config two, but I'm all ears. Uh, what's the best alternative to use this one? So I basically map uh, counter ID mask, which is specified in the JSON to uh, config two. X86, I noticed that the Perfmon repo and all the JSON file has a counter field, but I didn't see any kernel being used anywhere. It has like a comma separated counter IDs, mostly used for SMT, non-SMT hybrid cases, but the perf uh, doesn't actually pass that information. So is that a better alternative or standard way to do it? So Waylon, uh, Waylon Wang at Intel, she has a patch set up, oh, Waylon. <laughs> so um, so uh, adding the counters into the into the uh, the JSON and uh, and using it uh, in, in the tool. We'll, we'll be talking a bit about it on yep. the, the Wednesday talk in the, the main track. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if we can uh, abstract this to have the for other architectures, so that's the best thing we can do because for now it's just a which I don't like. Uh, the other thing, uh, the problematic, I don't know whether the problem or whether we knew this, uh, XADC has a bunch of this encoding scheme, right? Event encoding where your edge, inverse mask, uh, counter mask, all those things. 
and then these are all uh, standardized in the format attribute in x86 code we'll have we don't have any standard encoding so we'll end up vendor specific encoding so as of now there is no provision for it but is that like actually gets i don't wanted to know how much it gets used in place and do we need to provide anything i don't i don't know whether we'll come up with a vendor specific scheme uh, vendor will need it and we have to provide a vendor specific scheme but looking at x86 i saw some uses but didn't know how much it's in actual usage i think you're out of time too oh okay unless i got the time wrong i'll turn it over yeah, there's a, there's an obscure reverse use case where we use the what's in the encoding fields to work out what are the valid bits in the config uh, and so if you use config bits which aren't part of a, a format encoding you get a warning okay um, yeah. okay yeah uh, Thanks. Uh, I'll sync up with you guys later.